One of the most common causes of 3D printing failures is an improperly leveled bed. With FDM 3D printing, since everything is based off of layers building on top of each other, it is really important that you have a solid foundation, otherwise you drastically increase the chances of failure. Automatic bed leveling has gotten much more common and also much more reliable, but there are still a ton of 3D printers out there and new ones still coming out that use manual bed leveling. The traditional method of leveling a bed is by taking a piece of paper, placing it between the nozzle and your bed, and while you're moving back and forth that piece of paper, you're adjusting the knob until you get just the correct amount of tension on that piece of paper where you can feel the nozzle drag, but it's not actually tearing into that piece of paper. And it's something that is really tough to sort of explain via video. You sort of have to feel it and just get used to it over time. And I've seen a lot of new people get into 3D printing that really struggle with sort of finding that sweet spot. Last year, my buddy Chuck from Filament Friday released an e-leveler with the sole purpose of taking sort of the guesswork and pain points out of having to manually level your bed. Instead of using a piece of paper and feel, which is something that's open to interpretation, it uses a switch and an LED so that you can easily see when your bed is properly leveled. A few weeks ago, Chuck sent over one of these to play around with, so in today's video, we will take a look at the device to see how it works, how to use it, and of course, we will level a 3D printer. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's take a look at the device and how it works. Inside of the box, along with the main leveling device, you'll find a battery that's needed to power it, as well as a printed end cap, and that's used to just stabilize the leveling board, as well as to elevate the battery off of your 3D printer's bed. On the top side of the board, there is an X or crosshair, as well as a resistor and LED. The X is where you'll want the nozzle centered as you level each corner, and the LED will light up when the corner of the bed is leveled to the correct height. On the underside, there is a terminal to install the battery and a tactile switch that is positioned right below the X. When you level each corner on your printer correctly, the nozzle will trigger that tactile switch, which will then light up the LED so you'll know that you are at the correct height. That covers the hardware side of things, so now let's jump over and take a look at the G-code files that are provided. Chuck put together three sets of G-code files for the more common bed sizes. There's the Ender 2 size at 180 by 180 millimeters, the Ender 3 size at 220 by 220, and the Ender 3 Max sized at 300 by 300 millimeters. You don't have to use it on one of those printers, but you'll want to grab the G-code file that has the closest bed size to your printer. When you copy the file to a memory card and print it from your machine, the nozzle will lift 5.8 millimeters before moving to each corner of your bed above the leveling screws where it will pause for 20 seconds. During those 20 seconds while it's paused, you'll use the leveler to set the correct height of each corner of your bed. The 5.8 millimeters that the nozzle will lift is the exact gap needed for the leveler. The Kingroom KP3S has the same bed size as the Ender 2, so I went with that file. The KP3S has a pretty large X offset, so I did open up the G-code file to adjust the pause positions. Chuck did just release a video going over the G-code for the leveler, and I'll have that linked in the description if you want to check it out. All that is needed is to copy over the G-code file for your printer's bed size, as well as the square test which we can print after to verify our leveling. Before we run the leveling G-code and use the leveler, it's recommended to heat up the nozzle and clean off any stuck filament that's on the outside of your nozzle. For mine, I just raised it to 200 Celsius and then took a brass wire brush and brushed the nozzle a couple times, and then I let it cool down a bit. Once the printer cooled down, I used the screen on the printer to navigate to that leveling G-code file and hit print to start the process. The process is really simple. The nozzle will lift and move to a corner where it parks for 20 seconds. During that time, you place the leveler under the nozzle and align the X on the top of the board with the nozzle. Then, turn the bed leveling knob until you see the LED light up. I move the knob in very fine increments around the time the LED lights up to get it as accurate as possible. Then the nozzle will move to the next corner and you repeat the above steps for the remaining three corners. You can adjust the G-code if the 20 seconds is too quick, but for me it worked out pretty perfectly. Once completed, I ran the exact same G-code again, just so that way I could verify everything and make some slight little adjustments if needed. Once I was happy with the way all the corners were looking, I loaded in some PLA and ran the square test G-code file that was also provided. This will print a series of square outlines starting from the outside of the bed, working its way inward towards the center. 
The whole purpose of this is just to verify your work and to make sure that the bed is completely level before you go ahead and throw down a print. Once again, I use the Ender 2 G code for this and the KP3S, because it homes quite a bit off of the bed, I should have applied an offset, but I could very easily see that the bed was leveled perfectly. Also, because the Ender 2 uses a Bowden style extruder and the KP3S uses direct drive, the retraction distance was too high. And so on all of the corners of the squares, there is a slight little gap of filament. The purpose of this test is just to verify again that the bed is leveled so it doesn't have any effect on that. But if you're wondering in the video footage, that's the reason why there is that slight gap. Once you verify that the leveling is correct with the square test, then you're all set and you can go off and print anything that you want to print. I do recommend leaving those G-code files on the SD card just so if for some reason something gets tweaked in the future or you need to re-level it instead of having to go and download it, you've just got it there and you can run it do the leveling again, and then be back up and running with your printer very quickly. It did take me a couple of times to just sort of get used to how to position it on the X on the printed circuit board. But once I got the hang of it, it is really, really easy. And anybody should be able to level their bed very accurately with that in just a couple of minutes. As someone that's been 3D printing for about eight years now, I am really confident with my ability to use a piece of paper. Back when I started, automatic bed leveling was definitely not a thing, so I have no problem using a sheet of paper, but so many people that I see just getting started in 3D printing over the years have a really frustrating time where the nozzle is either too close and it's digging into the bed or sort of like welding parts to the surface, or it's too far away causing parts to come off and either warp or create sort of a spaghetti monster. So having this, even if you use it at the beginning and then decide you want to learn how to use a piece of paper, it, it just helps to get you up and running so much quicker. Chuck is always focused on making 3D printers as accessible to beginners as possible. And I think that this tool is a perfect example of him continuing to contribute to the community. And this is something that a lot of people are going to find very valuable. If you want to find out more or purchase one of these for yourself, I'll place links down below in the description where you can do so. And also let me know in the comments down below, what has your experience been like with bed leveling? I know that for a lot of people, they are very, very spoiled because a lot of the new machines do come with automatic bed leveling. But for myself, when I first started off, getting the correct gap, one, just figuring out what the correct sort of adhesive materials uh, or glues or sprays were for certain materials was incredibly difficult. But also getting that gap was something that I struggled with for quite a long time when I first got into it. And there wasn't nearly as much information available back then. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dan from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.